Hello, everybody, and welcome to On the Raritan. I am your host, Peter Slattery. This is the show where we talk about what we love, and what we love is Rucker's Survivor. This is the first episode of hopefully many that will be a complimentary series to all the episodes that we'll be releasing on YouTube. So we're going to talk about behind the scenes content, what it meant to start the organization, and yeah, all that good stuff. But before we do anything first, I'd like to introduce the members of the eBoard who will most likely be joining us for every single episode. So guys, please introduce yourselves and your roles. Of course. Uh, yeah. So I'm Adam Tropper. I am one of the co-founders of Rucker Survivor along with Peter. And I was also one of the, uh, well, now former co-presidents of Rutgers Survivor. I'm the first uh, alumni of the organization as I graduated this last semester, but I've still been trying to help behind the scenes, finishing our product, getting episode one out, doing everything we can to get Rutgers Survivor to where it is right now. Thank you. Hello, I'm Max Rubin. Uh, by the way, if you hear any scratching or any spinning noises, uh, that's our guinea pig right there in the back. Hopefully Fonzie won't be making too much noise throughout this podcast. But um, yeah, as I said, my name is Max Rubin. I am the current treasurer of Rutger Survivor and along with Peter and Adam, one of the founding members of Rutger Survivor. Um, I am a massive fan of Survivor and I've been doing a lot more than just uh, treasuring or treasury stuff. Uh, I've been the main editor of Rutger Survivor. So I did basically all of the editing for the first episode, which took around 75 to 80 hours to edit. Um, and every, like for every 15 hours of work, let's say I would show whatever I had done to Peter and Adam. We would all talk about it together. Um, and after a few times doing that, we put the episode out there and I'm very pleased with how fast it's gotten, um, how, how much attention it's gotten in just, in just a short time. I think it's at like 820 views yep. now and it's just been five days. So I'm so thankful for that. Hopefully more people see, even more people see it from here. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to get into this, excited to talk about the first episode and the process leading up to it. Mm -hmm. awesome. And real quick, thank God for that. Uh, just from Max saying like uh, he was the lead of the editing. I want to emphasize to everyone that we, and we'll get into this, that it's really just been the three of us since the very beginning. So even titles, as far as I'm concerned, mean nothing. We've all been working on every little aspect together for so long. It is a free man effort. And I'm just thankful that we've made it to where we are. Like you said, Max, in a few days, over 800 views. Thank you all for the support, by the way. Oh, but, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> looking forward to getting into it even more. All right, guys. And yeah, to keep it simple, uh, I'm Peter Slattery. I am the host for Rucker Survivor Season 1, and I'm going to be pretty much hosting this podcast. And uh, I was also one of the co-founders, and it's it's been an incredible journey. So, all right, guys, we're going to start this off by very, something very simple. What is Rucker's Survivor? For those who are not familiar either with our stuff or what the show Survivor is, could you give a brief explanation? What isn't Rucker's Survivor? <laughs> no, nah, but all, all jokes aside, uh, for... Uh, people who don't know, it's based off of the very basic premise of the CBS uh, hit reality show, Survivor, where people are stranded on an island and they have to vote each other out to become the sole survivor of the game. Uh, our version is obviously very different as we are on, at Rutgers University in New Jersey. We're on a college campus. Uh, but so we obviously aren't uh, in the business of starving people or doing intense challenges and uh, of having people beat each other up, I guess. Uh, but to put it very simply, uh, the social and strategic aspects we've really played into a lot. And that's what a lot of our cast and the people who have uh, been wanting to be involved uh, in the organization really appreciate. Just the chance to be able to play their favorite game. Um, but instead of doing all the commitment of being on national TV, um, barely eating, uh, you get to do it from the comfort of your dorm room, essentially, uh, and meet new people in the process. Yeah. Yeah, no, so uh, Adam is totally right. Uh, Rutgers Survivor, it's an opportunity for people who love the game of Survivor to come together. Um, a few of our contestants have even voiced to us this season that they're so happy they got to be part of an organization where they can meet other Survivor fans. Because once you're a fan of Survivor, you realize there are endless topics to talk about. Uh, just within Survivor. There's so many things you could possibly talk about. Um, and 
it's been so nice getting to meet all of our contestants. Now that the show is over, I actually get to talk to some of them and we get to bond over our love for the show and for the game Survivor. Um, so beyond just a club where people get to play a Rutgers version of the game, it is an opportunity for Survivor fans to come together and just talk about Survivor and enjoy the love for Survivor. Now that the season is over, a few of our contestants come by every week to Peter and Adam's house and we all watch uh, CBS Survivor together. And we even watched the premiere together when it first uh, premiered five days ago. It's been an awesome experience uh, for me and I think for a lot of the contestants too. Yeah, yeah. And just, okay, so if you know what Survivor is, Rucker Survivor is Survivor at Rucker's. Uh, if you don't know what Survivor is, just to get more formal with the actual gameplay, basically 20, there's 20 contestants in the game. They're broken up into teams. Those teams compete in challenges. The winners are safe. The losers have to vote somebody else off on their own tribe. So it's a bunch of you know social interaction strategy. It's a great time. And that happens all the way down the line until the tribes merge. And then once that happens, it goes again all the way down the line until there is a single sole survivor. So that's what survivor is if you're not familiar. And the next question I have for, I guess, everyone is, why did you want to start Rucker Survivor? And I guess I'll go first um, with that question. I like, I think Adam, at least, I think I've talked more about this with Adam than Max. But for me, I always wanted to play it. But I was just so upset that Rutgers didn't have, you know, its own version of Survivor. So I was like, well, if I can't play it, I, I, I guess I'll get someone and get other people. We can maybe try to make it ourselves. But yeah, that's why I wanted to start. I wanted to play, but I just wasn't wasn't able to. And yeah, I found out that Rutgers Survivor might be a thing when in my acapella group with Peter, me and Peter met in an acapella group. Uh, shout out to Casual Harmony of Rutgers. Um, and I saw he had a Survivor buff and I'm like, yo, you watch Survivor? And he was like, yeah. And we just started talking about it. And then Peter told me about how he wanted to get Rutgers Survivor uh, officially recognized by Rutgers and it could become an official club. Um, and I said, yo, I would love to help out with that. I have some editing experience. I met Adam later and we talked about Survivor. Um, and since then, since we got approved, the three of us have really, it's just been our brainchild. It's just been every single week we just talk about, okay, how do, how are we going to format this? What challenges could we have? Uh, which which contestants that auditioned, who should be in a tribe together? You know, and we just, um, and, and I love that process. I love thinking about the game. Uh, I like analyzing the edit and uh, listening to all the behind the scenes stuff. So getting to be a part of a mini version of that myself, it was awesome. And I'm so glad I got to do it with these two guys. Yeah, absolutely. And for me, I think my story is probably a little bit more similar to Peter's, uh, but I, I'm really going to wind back the clock here. Uh, about two years ago, I met Peter. Now we were in the same uh, dorm building, uh, Quad 2, House 27. Shout out to that. Um, so that, that was a lot of fun. But me, me and Peter, we started talking and uh, we were just hanging out in his room one day and we were talking about kids shows of all things. Uh, and one of like us, I don't know. Nostalgic stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah we, we bring up Fetch with Ruff Ruffman. For those of you who don't know, it's like a PBS educational competition show. But that was at the height of like this reality TV mega craze i guess um and then peter's like oh that's just a kid's version of survivor and i'm like wait a second you watch survivor and he's like yeah you and i'm like yeah okay so then we just got oh. in yeah i did I, oh there's I never a kid's you. version of survivor that's not total drama that's crazy uh, okay that's yes and look. no not <laughs> really but it, it felt like survivor like looking in the interesting way. Same vibe. It, like it's not the, same game drama is closer to Survivor, but Fetch with Ruff Ruffman is kind of like that same category. God, <laughs> I, I got to binge Fetch with Ruff Ruffman now. Yo, I, I'll do it with you. <laughs> it was a cool show. It was a cool show. No, but, uh -huh. but yeah, so that really sparked, I think, me and Peter's friendship even more. Uh, like, obviously, we were at season 41 was premiering at the time, so we were watching that uh, every week. Then the next year, uh, we move in uh, together off campus in a house of eight people, but me and Peter are roommates. So we're every night, like almost we're watching an episode of Survivor, like an older season, because uh, admittedly, I got into it most maybe right before COVID. And then I got through a lot of seasons, but it, I still haven't seen them all. So we're trying to go through the ones that we haven't seen to create a little bit of excitement and more understanding of the game. And now fast forward to 
approximately one year ago exactly now. Um, me and Peter, uh, we take co-credit for uh, for when the idea came up because we can't really remember how it started. Um, but one of us uh, was, we were talking about just the idea of playing on Survivor. And there are other colleges that uh, have successfully created their own versions of the show, uh, most notably Maryland, uh, Boston, Michigan, uh, school such as that. So we're like, why not just create one at Rutgers? And, and here we are, as Max mentioned, uh, Peter, uh, they, they uh, found out through their acapella group that they were both fans of the show. The three of us ended up working together. And uh, yeah, the process, which I'm sure we'll delve into in a little bit, uh, which started just about a year ago to uh, put us in a position to be a official organization at Rutgers. And ever since, yeah, it's been full steam ahead. And Max, you're absolutely right. It, it is like our baby in a way. It's uh, it's crazy because I I, I was always like, since I started, a pretty big fan of the show. I went all in during COVID. But at the same time, I, like, I never would have anticipated being able to essentially run every little aspect of it and look at all the behind the scenes stuff and really see it all from a different perspective. So I've been loving it and, do, and doing this with two of my best friends. I mean, I couldn't ask for anything more. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I definitely I agree with what all you guys said. It, it was a, it was pretty incredible starting. It. Speaking of which, that is our next question. And I think Adam is probably the best person to answer this first. And it was how was the process of starting the organization? <laughs> oh, red tape, red tape. Yeah. Yeah. It, it brief, but just like, you know, just mm -hmm. what, what was it like? Yeah, uh, the red tape is an understatement. No, in Rutgers, I guess you'd call it scarlet tape, maybe. I, I don't know. I like it that. Was, I like that. It, yeah. it was a lot thicker than normal red tape. Uh, but uh, when we first came up with the idea, we looked at uh, what we had to do. We were initially just going to launch it unofficially. Uh, but then we realized, oh, wait, we could get possible funding through Rutgers. We'd be able to advertise at the club fair. There's much more benefit to being affiliated with the actual university. Uh, so that's why I said about a year ago today, I, I think we actually submitted the forms like March 31st, 2023. And as we're recording right now, it's March 30th, 2024. That was when the form was due to apply uh, to be a provisional organization. So we had to uh, essentially just write up a constitution. Uh, I uh, did most of that part uh, just because I'm a communication major. So writing essays, kind of my thing. So I uh, whipped up a quick document with all the rules, uh, what we were planning on doing, really explaining to, to Rutgers what this would be. And the hardest part was that this is so unique, to, especially to Rutgers. There's no other competition-based organization in which people willingly vote each other out of the organization. Even though they aren't kicked out of the organization, they're uh, kicked out of the game, still allowed to be part of the organization mm -hmm. completely. I want to make that very clear. But we had to make Rutgers understand that. And that led to all this scarlet tape uh, trying to, uh, to get through everything. So we finally get half approval, I would say. And then we get an email from Rutgers saying that uh, our challenge list wasn't specific enough and that we needed, uh, and keep in mind, this is last spring, uh, long before the semester started. We really didn't plan out every individual challenge at that point. But Rutgers was like, hey, uh, we need to know everything you're going to do for like, uh, obviously, liability concerns. Totally understandable. The problem is they only gave us like 24 hours to submit it. And they're like, your application will be void if you don't provide it. So me and Peter panicked for about 15 minutes, then calmed down and was able to, to bang that out in maybe an hour. So that was our saving grace. But that's just another piece of the red or scarlet tape that we had to get through. And after that, I would say once the summer hit and then the next this last school year, uh, everything was fairly smooth sailing uh, from here on out. We do have, and you guys can talk about it more too, the uh, provisional status for being a first year club. Um, but should, I think we're going to get rid of that in two days. Yeah, yeah. April 1st. Yeah. We should know by April 1st. I mean, we all the, uh, fully, fully recognized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then Max, yeah. do you have anything to add on that? Uh, with the Because my next question is more for you because I think you're, you're really good to answer it too. Mm -hmm. And you should be the primary answer. But yeah, anything notable for the start of the organization for you? Um, well, I remember you guys told me we got approved and that was one week before the involvement fair. Um, oh, yeah, so, I forgot. <laughs> so I, I think that's been a common theme of us realizing that us getting information very quickly before we needed to actually do the thing that we were getting information for. Yeah. So like for the, uh, we're a provisional organization, so we can't fill out, or I'm the treasurer. I can't fill out the regular budget form. I'm, uh, there's a separate one that gets sent to provisional organizations. I got sent it three days ago and <laughs> it was due yesterday. 
Yes, um, sir. We love it. All right. Um, so, Always but fun. we did it. We it was just enough time where I actually feel like we could really talk about what we wanted to um allocate money for uh we just started coming up with a bunch of challenge ideas and then i was very specific in the budget of all of the different challenge elements that we would need to purchase and all of the different you know costume pieces you know in survivor you have the buffs uh but we just use bandanas different color bandanas to mark what team you're on um but we ended up knocking that out in a couple days i talked with a bunch of the new board members and some other friends of ours who participated in the show and we all came up with a bunch of ideas and we were on it really quick which makes me feel good about next year i think we're going to have a very very efficient very fast working board next year yeah we'll, then, we'll talk more about the uh the yeah. future for the board but mm -hmm. i wanted to move on for the next question just to keep things like you know a little yeah. timely uh so Max, yeah, I feel like, cause you know, you made the Google form and you were kind of, you spearheaded this part, I think a lot. Uh, how was the casting process like? And what did you, how did you cast the show or what were you thinking? Was it random? Did, was it predetermined? What, what do you think happened with that? Okay, so we were aiming for 12 contestants um, and we had cast 12 people and we were watching all basic we just told the contestants to just send a video i think there, there was a little more to the application than that but that was really the only part of the application where we got to hear them plead their case as to why they should be on the show why they want to be on the show and just get a sense of who they are i mean you can't really get a sense for a person just based on a three minute video uh but it's the best we can do it was the most efficient way we could do it um, and it was also our first time doing the audition process. It might be different next year. Uh, but we just sat in Peter and Adam's room and we just watched all the audition videos. And after every audition, uh, we just thought, okay, so yeah, what what what, what kind of role do we think this person's going to play on the season? Who should they be paired up with? Because we have to pair them up into two different teams. So it's like, okay, what? how should we split them up? We had two big guys um, and we're like, okay, so let's put one of them on each team. We wanted to make sure we had an even gender split. Uh, some, there are some personalities where we're like, okay, maybe let's put them together. That might be interesting. Or, okay, these personalities, maybe they should be on different teams. Um, so there was a lot that went into that. And right before uh, we start filming, right before episode one, uh, there were two girls, uh, one on each team, who messaged us saying, oh, uh, sorry, I don't want to be a part of the show last minute we found that out um so then we're like okay what do we do do we we only have 10 people now do we do the team stay the same um and then we looked at the list and i'm like hey you know what let's let's just switch these two people i think that makes sense and then those became our teams so we were planning to the very very last minute and i will say without saying any names that last minute change really had an effect on the season and maybe we'll get more into it we, when we'll, we'll say that in a future episode yeah. that changed but, uh, yeah and then adam yeah. you have anything to add for that honestly i think max uh hit that on the head perfectly i mean we've uh had to jump through so many hoops just to like you said find out the information and then we're planning all this last minute everything from the casting to uh strategically figuring out where we're going to film and you'll see throughout the season we filmed on multiple different parts of campus because Rutgers is five campuses within a campus it is a very big place and we wanted to be able to showcase uh all the different aspects that Rutgers has to offer so we were also um at the same time planning in advance what time what location we'd be filming um I had to send out emails to everyone weekly to let them know like what the tentative plan was uh to, so to keep everyone updated because um trying to get like between the three of us or 10 contestants some people that are helping out with filming that can be as many as 15 people um that you need to get at a certain place in time which is honestly pretty hard to do i'm thankful we did it and we were able to pull it off uh perfectly um all the way through um but it's those last minute things especially for that first episode where you feel like there's that sense of urgency um but it's so much more rewarding when you're able to actually complete it successfully and see the work you've done and i think uh, by virtue of now episode one being uh out and released to public once again great job max with the editing but like everyone can see what our vision was now going back a little over a year ago our we had a vision and now we have a product that is 
objectively, I like to think, or at least very subjectively, very good. <laughs> yeah, I just to add on that, yeah, I, I've loved all our casting choices. And I think what what people will find very cool throughout the season is that uh, they're they just do a really good job. Like they're really good in front of a camera. As the season progresses, just the the interpersonal relationships, they just grow, they blossom. And it's so cool to see all the relationships being formed. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So that is probably the last question I have on how to build uh, the organization, what it was like building it. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we get back, we're going to talk about more specific stuff behind episode one. You know, how did it feel? What, what was going on? All that stuff. So yeah, with that being said, we're going for a quick break, but we'll be right back. If you guys get this, you will be tied. And there is a tiebreaker question. So you, you're still in this. Maurice is still in this. Here we go. Question 10. What frequency would you turn into if you wanted to listen to Rutgers WRSU radio? I don't think, I mean, it's either you know it or you don't. I've seen it on posters. It's definitely, there's posters. One of our eboard members is a part of it. Or he's the this right to point from the council. <laughs> any advantage you can, it's fair, it's fair game, man. Just don't, don't look up anything on your phone, oh, I think that's cheap. If you see something around here, maybe you can get lucky. Good strategy. I like it. Alright, 10 seconds to lock in your answers. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, write them down. Three, two, one. Okay. Answers must be locked in now. All right. I don't know who answered first, but we're going to give it to Warren. We'll let them answer first because you guys answered a lot. What do you have? All right. We said eight, six, four, seven. Okay. What did you guys say? What? Eight, 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 four. What? Eight, 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 point four. Correct answer. Hello, everybody, and we're back with On the Raritan. I'm your host, Peter Slattery, and now... We are going to be talking about specifics that happened in episode one. So if you didn't watch it yet, there's going to be massive spoilers. We're going to be talking about big players, some strategies that are starting to be built up, and who went home and what we think. So, uh, yeah, there's not real structure to this, but last chance, spoilers. So I guess I just want to start by, like, the big players, obviously, if you watch the episode, and you know, it's Ethan, Joe, and Jack. Those, those three guys are really, really shown in the edit. And, you know, I just – I. They find it interesting how, you know, Ethan kind of took this like leadership role over the Warbling tribe and how Joe is trying to be like, you know, this very strategic mastermind between uh, between his group, tr bouncing between two alliances. Yeah, no, 100 percent. And I mean, it, it's really cool. Like when, once we got into the game to be able to see who's really putting themselves out there, because you could tell at the very beginning, I think everyone was a little bit nervous. Maybe it was because they didn't want to put a target on their back or the fact that they knew they were being filmed and were, wanted to be careful what they said before they got a little comfortable. So, I mean, for whatever reason, uh, which re really doesn't matter at the end of the day, everyone ended up doing a very good job uh, giving us as much uh, content and as much of their thoughts as possible. But you're right, Peter, absolutely. Those three stood out uh, in, in episode one for sure. Um, I thought it was just... Uh, really interesting especially with joe i gotta say um because uh it felt like he was really the big strategist of the episode and i don't even know why i put that in quotes but because he was a legit strategist uh he definitely knew what he was doing and i think he's one to watch out for mm -hmm. yeah so i'm very thankful that we have joe on this cast uh, not only he's a fantastic narrator but also um our first episode, you know, we're still, we didn't really have a budget. So uh, we were mostly just using our iPhones in our iPhone cameras or our iPhone microphones. Um, we did have one film student come and help us for the first episode, uh, Sadie. Big shout out to Sadie. She did a great job. Um, and she did have a little shotgun mic mounted on top of her DSLR, but even that doesn't produce the best audio. Um, and it was also a really windy day. And you'll hear that in the episode. Um, so a lot of the, especially because people, when they're talking to each other, they don't want to talk too loud. Um, we weren't in that big a space. Um, so if someone talks too loud, uh, someone like 15 feet away might hear you and be like, oh, you're planning on getting me out. Okay, now I'm going to vote you. Um, so people were talking fairly quietly. Um, and also just because of the wind, because we didn't have any real microphones, you couldn't really hear people too well. 
but the confessionals we made a point to walk somewhat far away from where all of the strategizing was happening so that people could speak up a little bit and thanks to joe we were able to get a great look inside of the strategy that was going on uh, stuff that you might have seen even more of if if the audio for the conversations were better but because joe articulated what was happening so well and because uh the audio from the confessionals was more usable we were able to still tell a cohesive story even if we didn't have the best technology and we didn't have the best conditions to do so uh, yeah, so, that, yeah oh yeah and that's not a diss at all to the other people who had bad audio it was more just you know it's everyone's first day we don't know what we're doing i'm sure as hell they didn't know what they were doing so you know it was more just like they uh, eventually, you know, everyone in the further episodes, you know, we get more comfortable, the audio, we learn how to take audio better. And that that really helps out. And yeah, it's it's so interesting to see, I mean, obviously, because we have kind of the behind the scenes look, but you know, the, these different styles of gameplay are starting to emerge, like you have G and Ashi who are playing kind of like a carefree game, like, oh, as long as my sister loses, I don't care. And then you have Matt, who's playing a very low key game. Jack, who's trying, or sorry, John, who's trying to be a little bit sneaky. Jack, who's just trying to be like, I don't care, whatever. This is me. Uh, Dungeons and Devils. Oh yeah. But um, you know, and then uh, and uh, yeah. So just all these yeah. different personalities are 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 coming out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's why I got to say too. I just got to shout out Jack because, like you said, he was one of the the big characters in uh, the first episode, and he was uh, very outgoing, very upfront about what. Was his intentions were to not be voted out first and uh he was enjoying every second of that so i think it also breathes some different life uh into the episode as well but i gotta say in terms of uh of Voorhees, and i know we're going to talk about uh the tribal and everything more but everyone was looking at joe as a strategist which he was but what they weren't looking at except for jack apparently who uh mentioned it in his confessional that joe and kevin uh at this point are a pair um, and no one seems to be looking at Kevin. So just like Matt, just like uh, some other guys, uh, Kevin seems to be playing a pretty low key game. And so far it's working. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I like Kevin a lot in this episode too. Uh, his edit isn't as showy. He doesn't get as much screen time as Joe or Jack, but I mean, of course he gets the episode title, his legendary scram confessional. Which is so funny. The second I was watching over the footage and I saw that, I'm like, okay, that's our title for episode one. Um, but also, Kevin, he has one confessional the whole episode, and it might be the most important confessional in the episode because it's about him wanting to get out of May because he feels aligned with Joe. He feels potential for an align for an alignment with both Gia and Jack, but he doesn't see a May in that picture. And when he brings that up to Joe and Gia, Joe then says okay, well, Amay did throw out your name, which then gets the ball rolling on Amay's ouster. Um, so Kevin was the one who initiated, he was the one who initiated that conversation that ended up resulting in Amay getting taken out. And I might even be missing some stuff because, you know, the audio quality from those conversations is not great. Um, I ended up listening to it, like with earbuds in full blast, turning like wind cancellation off, and I tried to tell the best story possible based on what I knew, uh, based on what I was getting from everything. But yeah, you can't always just look out for these uh, these people who are getting like 10 confessionals an episode and saying, OK, they're going to win. You never know. Um, yeah. And yeah. I mean, I know who wins, but I'm not going to I'm not going to be. We might, yeah, we might. I will say um, I when you're watching, try paying attention to some of the people who may not get like a 10 confessional episode. Like Kevin, he only got one confessional the first episode, but it was very it was a very substantive confessional that ended up uh, revealing what the plan ended up being that day, which was Amay getting taken out. Yeah, and Max, like you said, it's also like everyone had their chance to shine at some point during the season. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter mentioned like they all have different personality traits in a way that mesh in different ways. But no matter what, everyone signed up because they wanted to try playing survivor they wanted to play the game and they're doing all the strategy and just uh like when we're having these conversations you could tell how real it is because even though it's just a fun little college club at the same time they don't want to get booted off so it, it's incredible to see and uh, and you're absolutely right the edit like for some players may be more uh 
unbalanced than it is for others, but then you never know who's going to emerge the next time around. And I will say for sure that some of the people who weren't highlighted this episode will be highlighted in the future in some way or another. Oh, hundred percent. And yeah, Adam, Adam brought up a really good point there, how he was like, oh, I was referencing Real Survivor. And you know, like this show, it it feels like Real Survivor in a sense. Like people are like, oh, I love Jack. Oh, I love Ethan. Oh, I, I, I hate Kevin. Like, you know, there's just a bunch of stuff that like people are rooting for players. You hate Kevin, you're wrong. Kevin's awesome. Okay, <laughs> Well, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Yeah, I'm no, I know. Right like, now, oh, if you I hate really anyone, like, wrong. I really everyone, like, no, I really exactly, like exactly. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't hate. Don't hate. Yeah, but uh, just love, just love strongly our product dislike. <laughs> I strongly dislike said player. Anyway, <laughs> um, all right. So instead of talking now about more specifically the players, I think we should start talking more about the episode. So like, mm. the immunity challenge was really interesting. Like Max said before, our budget was like negative ten dollars because we had to pay <laughs> for the room for the general interest meeting. So that was our budget, but um. The, the immunity challenge was really, really close. What was it? It was like about 6-6, six, six, the whole, like it was tied all yeah. through until the last couple of questions where Warblin took the lead, then Voorhees was almost out of it. And then they got that one clincher question right. And then it bounced back and forth. But ultimately, Warblin uh, kept their lead strong and nobody got the question about WRSU. And I know uh, that's Adam. I was so... Mm-hmm disappointed man i mean i knew there were no choices but uh peter even said some episodes one of our board members is a part of it i think you can guess who uh i do a different radio show with uh uh one of my other friends uh motorsports today i'm that's my other thing besides survivor like nascar and motorsports is my other passion so mm-hmm. it's been really cool to be able to do a radio show with that so when we were coming up with the questions for trivia obviously records trivia uh felt like a very fitting first challenge especially with the low budget vibe um but then when i was coming up with it i'm like Oh my God, let me see who knows 88.7. The billboards are on uh, the uh, the buses at Rutgers. Like you see it at the student centers. So it's not like an impossible question. And you see people, they, they got close. What were the guesses? 88. It was 88.4, 86.7. So like, that's, why I, said, so, that's why I said, you're basically right. That's why I said, I love how so they were running in so many different ways. That's why I said, you're yeah. so in so many different mm-hmm. ways. But yeah, I love how Werblin, Werblin got the uh, the first and third digit, and then yeah. Voorhees got the first two. Yeah. yeah. But mm-hmm. where I was going with that is that I just love the strategy within that, too, because up until that point, keep in mind, Warblin already had the lead going into that question. But the fact that everyone just started running around looking to see if they could find a sticker or something like uh, on the window. Jack behind. started that because he looked in the trash can and people were laughing. And I guess, guys, by this point, you could probably tell that I'm a very chill host. Literally, people were laughing at Jack like, oh, come on, what are you doing? And I was like, no, that's fair game. And he's like, oh, it's fair game. I was like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> As long as you don't look on your phone. So, you know, then they all get up. You see that scene where they all get up. They're all looking for posters to see. Because I've definitely seen it on posters, at least in the student center. So, but unfortunately, there were no posters. We'll never know who got, like, who figured out that it was, like, 88. Like, the fact that they got both eights, like, you know, in the beginning. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But- with that, um, like we said, Warblin won the very first immunity challenge of Rucker Survivor, which took us into Voorhees, which we were talking about earlier. Ironic, because Warblin right. won. At Voorhees Hall. That is very ironic. And Jack. And another out. another thing I want to say about the challenge is that people just standing in one place answering trivia questions. I was worried as I was editing it. I was like, "Is this going to be boring?" Uh, and we ended up cutting down the challenge quite a bit. I think it ended up it, at the start. It was like three or four minutes longer, and we cut out a lot of them just deciding on what answer it is and just them like talking amongst each other um but i think we cut it down to a pretty good pace and i think what really helps that challenge uh become alive rather than just be just a dead just people standing there answering questions is our casting because on Werblin, you had ethan who delivered a soliloquy every single time he answered a question we are not frat bros or frat sisters or frat sisters ethan. yeah Beta Delta Pi. And I was like, yeah, you know, no. Well, yeah, Peter's a bro either. B Sigma Sigma, Peter. B I'm a math major. It's, <laughs> it's, it's fine. Yeah, the whole debate about that. Uh-huh. But, but yeah, anyway, we're, what you're saying, yeah. But we're so lucky that we had Ethan on Werblin, who made his answers really entertaining. And then on Voorhees, you had Jack, who had these crazy reactions to every time he got a question wrong or he got a question right. And yeah, just that he, movement, I think he thought he got that question right when he did like the boom. Yeah, I think uh, it was funny fair play esque. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I, I saw it as like, oh, nope, going to you. You got it right. Like, I don't know. <laughs> However, you interpreted it, it was fun to watch. Yeah, it, yeah. it was so funny. 
So yeah, no, thanks to Ethan and Jack in particular for making that first challenge as entertaining as it was. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah. And then Peter, I want to go back to you. You were going on to the, uh, the, either the Warblin discussion after or the Voorhees. Oh yes. Yeah. So in the episode after Warblin one, uh, because we really don't have, you know, like tribe talk where they're on their own individual Island. We really just wanted to hear Warblin's thoughts before they got uh, sent off, um, which they actually they didn't, but we'll explain it later. But, um, you know, we just got a couple words from everyone and we end with this really cool thing that Ethan says, where I really want, I push this to be the very last line he said, which is like, we'll see. We'll see how many of them are under my thumb. And there's just, there's, everyone gets their own little chirp at the end, which is, which is great. And then finally, we move into the big strategic part of the episode, the scramble with Voorhees. I know we've kind of already talked about this. So maybe let's try to highlight some other things because we know Joe, at least, you know, he's, He's really good. He's centered in the middle around these these two groups of two people, you know. So if you want to expand on that, yeah. or any well, you... yeah. Well, that's why I was saying that I felt Kevin was arguably more of a power player uh, in this round because uh, Joe trusted Kevin as his number one. Joe said in the confessional, Kevin came up to him first, so they were working side by side to position both of themselves in the middle. But their strategic target right now seems to be on Joe. So I thought they both did an incredible job. And then obviously getting the ball rolling, it, I don't want to say it was necessarily an easy vote per se, uh, because every vote requires so much forward thinking in Survivor. Um, but them all being able to uh, conclude that a May would be born going. And yes, there's the spoiler. Um, first time we actually say it. He doesn't win? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but uh, first off, credit to May also. He, uh, he he took it like a champ. Uh, he he was um, great the whole time, and you yeah, see he was, he was awesome. Yeah, he, was... he said ending confessional. He 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 said this uh, also like in the audition video he sent to. I'm either gonna come in last or I'm gonna win. So technically he was right. And, he got and it he right. Had, he got it. And right. he had a great attitude about. It. So we definitely have to uh, shout him out real quick. Um, but. Yeah, there, there's no easy votes in Survivor. They're all thinking ahead. No one wants to be the first boot. And they all. And but one thing I want to emphasize too is that the way we have to film this, they all met each other that day. So mm -hmm. when when we say it was a scramble, except for Gia and Rafi. Okay, yeah, but, fair, fair yeah. enough. But <laughs> they were on eight separate eight tribes. They were on separate uh, tribes, and they were on separate tribes. So yeah. so they so all these interactions were were brand new like you could argue blossoming friendships or about to become enemies cutthroat however you want to look at it but it was cool to see them strategize like because that's as close to a real game as you could really get and them not knowing each other right before we have to vote them out 20 minutes later i kind of felt bad for may because literally that was the first thing we did as Rucker survivor you know there was no big group meet and greet before it was that game so he really only got to play for like two hours but you know he he did a good job you know obviously there's always has to be that one person but um, the other thing I wanted to point out was uh, kind of interesting, which is hinted at in the edit, but it's not really like broadcasted, is the fact that Werblin, they requested to stay for Tribal. So we were initially like, mm, I don't know how I feel about that. But eventually we agreed on if they were a earshot away so they can't hear anything. Like, so basically they were all the way in the back while they were doing Tribal Council. And Which you can see people. briefly when Jack is, you see me pointing at you. And I'm walking over to right. Him. Yeah. So they're they're able to see the tribal, but they cannot hear anything and there's no phones. So they're they're not getting any they're not getting any vocal information. Literally the only thing they're getting to know is who gets voted out at the end, because unless they get something out, I don't know how you would get something else out of no, that. There's no way. All you can see is uh is who gets voted out instead of having a big reveal of the next episode. Uh now looking at the new Voorhees tribe that may vote it out. That's not necessary. That's really the only difference. And Max, did you have anything to add? Uh pretty much on the scramble. I I that's what we were kind of talking about. Any any um, other highlights? Yeah, no, so I like during the Voorhees scramble, you get to see everyone's different approach to the game. So you have Joe who's very, very strategic and has a lot of intent behind everything he's doing and is really eager to explain it to the audience. You have Kevin, who also has a great strategic mind. Maybe he's a little more reserved. Maybe that will benefit him. Maybe it won't. Um, you have Gia, who seems a, like a little overwhelmed by the whole thing in the first episode. She doesn't know who to vote for. She thought everyone did a good job in the challenge. And I'm so glad that she's on the tribe because no one else has that perspective. So it's great that we get to hear a perspective that's so different than anyone else's. Um, and then we also have a May who says he's just going to throw any name out there. 
And that would, that's what ends up biting him is he threw yeah. Kevin's name out there to Joe, who Kevin was Joe's ally. biggest ally. And that was part of the reason that he got voted out, at least that part of the reason that we saw. And then you have Jack, who... Um, I think he's... we're going to call it right here. I think he is the fan favorite of episode one, at least. Just of the episode to... one. Well, well based, off, one based off the comments that you guys have been giving on YouTube, uh, most of the conversations have been centered around Jack. So, yes. Jack, mm -hmm. we will crown him. We might do this every episode. He is the fan favorite of episode one right now. Congratulations, Jack. Good job, Jack. <laughs> anyway, Max. But, know. yeah, Jack seems to be somewhat relaxed about the game he's says hey i just want to make it through the first episode i just want to have fun you know you um, our applebee's gift card <laughs> the 20 dollars applebee's gift card i got to i'm so glad jack is on the show i had a lot of fun editing him when he's talking about how he thinks he might get voted off because he won't shut up and then the edit shuts him up right there when he says that <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure Jack was laughing when he saw that because um, he's someone um, who, upon getting to know him, he can laugh at himself. And I really appreciate that about him. Yeah. All right. So that was kind of like the scramble. I think we talked a lot about the scramble. We're going to move. I mean, we we said this already, you know, the, the tribal. I mean, unfortunately for May, it's pretty cut and dry. The vote is it was four one. May May voted for Kevin, was it? Again? Kevin. I may voted for Kevin. for Kevin. That one straight, but like you said, that one name he just threw out there cost him his place in the game. And uh mm. yeah, I don't know. Was there anything notable for tribal about you guys? I mean, obviously besides Scram, which we talked about, which is the episode one title, but uh yeah. I, I gotta say how well we were able to do that host scene too and i think that a big part of that is max's editing because you might uh see we had a problem with the lighting where we set up our our voting booth um so like because it was a really cool shot and we wanted you you guys to be able to see like uh the rest of the tribe and peter in the background but the way the sun was hitting it was like 4 30 at that point it was getting sunset and uh the sun was really messing with some of the views but max made it look really cool like like vintage survivor like a, a little cut of each of them entering and exiting that little area um and all culminating with the scram clip uh so i just think it like my biggest takeaway from that aside from the strategy is just how well done it was and that's a testament to us plus sadie who was helping us out just like we had no idea what we were doing that morning but somehow we pulled it off and created an incredible product and uh made a really fun day for everyone all around yeah, and that mm. area was beautiful. That Voorhees Mall area, oh, yeah. especially yeah. October twenty eighth. It was, it was, it was probably the last like warm day of the year. Like, it was got. the last day. Of the I mean, season. as Jack said, it was hot. <laughs> it was hot. It was, it was hot as something out there. Yeah. <laughs> and now I guess to vote someone off. But uh, yeah, Max, mm. do you have anything for the tribal you'd like to point out? Uh, no, but I would like to go back to Wordland a little bit and just okay. talk about how even though. From what I've heard, a lot of people didn't really get a sense of Werblin, uh, maybe besides Ethan. Um, and it's because they won the challenge. We didn't get to see them strategy. We didn't, we saw a little bit, but we didn't get to see them try to vote someone out yet. So we don't know Werblin that well yet. But if you're paying attention, I think you could gain some insight from some of the people on that team. Ethan, of course, has a big episode. Also, John has a lot of great confessionals where you and can- Logan. And Logan. And Logan. Um, I'll touch on John first. He is very skeptical about his tribe. I'm glad. I, I, what I appreciate about John um, is how honest he's willing to be. You know, he thinks his tribe looks weak, and he will tell that to the audience. He's not afraid to share his feelings. He gets sus vibes from Boston Green, thinks he's coming too strong out of the gate. He is willing to voice that to the audience. So I really appreciate John for that. Um, also, Logan, who um, we... I loved this in the editing is people saying, oh, the guy with the long hair. And then I cut to Logan. Um, that was really fun to work rad with. Rad hair dude. What's up? Rad, <laughs> the rad hair dude. And Logan, who also seems to have a really good mind for the game, uh, just based on this first episode, if you're paying attention, I think you can get that from him. And then um, Ashi, who has great lines about her sister, about how she hopes she wins and her sister doesn't. Um, and then we also, who do we have on Wordland? We have Matt who yep. only has one confessional at the beginning, um, but you can just tell he has like a very... just He's ready to play. Very, he's ready. He's, he's ready, ready to play. Ready to uh, do it. Mm -hmm. and he, and you, I think you can get from the first episode that he is someone who does care a lot about Survivor, someone who's really excited about it. 
And um, yeah, I hope that if you're paying attention, you get a lot of you get a lot from Werblin too, even if they don't get quite as much in the first episode. Yeah, and that's exactly it. I felt like you did a really good job of highlighting everyone to some extent, even yeah. though Matt and I don't know who else maybe only got one other confessional. Like their screen time from a solo perspective may have been low in episode one, but you still get a sense of your personality and what their plans for the game are. Mm hmm. Yeah, and that's just, you know, a tribute, because we're not trying to purple Kelly anyone here. And I know Max, that is definitely Max's goal. I, okay, I don't know if this is a spoiler. No one's getting purple Kelly. Okay, I, I ever, hope ever, people want it, so, yeah. Yeah, no, that's not that's not going to happen to anyone. Everyone. We have to our like they, the they all made the effort, so we're yeah. probably going to show it to their friends and families. We, we're going to highlight everyone. If anything, me and Adam are getting the purple edit. We just, they are know. getting the purple edit. Yeah, I, I, like, come on. Um, all right. Yeah. So I guess now we're just going to bounce all the way back to the end. Um, like we said, May goes home. He gives this confessional. You know, it's either he knew he was going to get out first or he was going to win. Unfortunately, it was the former. He got out first. And we end the episode. You know, Joe is Joe is um, very happy with how things turned out. He says, you know, it, the vote went exactly as I wanted. And uh, yeah, so it seems looking pretty good for the Voorhees tribe. And we kind of have alliances you know set up right now and honestly that that's the entirety of episode one so if you want to get anything from this it's basically um uh do, do, do the main characters at this point you know it's it's ethan it's joe it's jack logan and john are kind of in there as well and we're really waiting to see more from gia ashi matt and uh anyone else kevin, kevin. and a little more from kevin because we he did have the episode title like we said but yeah mm -hmm. so i guess that's the end of the episode talk and before we end this this has been great, guys. And I'm sure I'm sure if no one, at least the contestants, who really want to listen to this and get some more deeper insight as their thought processes. The final questions I have are, um, did you think we would make it this far? Uh, yeah. Yes, I didn't yes. think it would. I, I didn't think it would be as successful. I didn't think at uh, the involvement there, we would have se almost 75 names on our email list. I didn't mm -hmm. think at our general interest meeting, which we could only book on a Friday night because we had like the lowest priority out of anyone in terms of booking rooms, that we would get 23, 24 people. Uh, so like I, just the overwhelming interest once people realized that there was a club like this. And then to get all the applications, we had to whittle it down to 10. But those 10 were still so enthusiastic to be there. And like I said, even in May, he took it like a champ. Maybe a little bit upset that he was booted so soon, but everyone loved the idea of playing. And I think the, the fact that our club was so unique. And yes, we were very scrappy. We made it very clear at the general interest meeting that we barely know what we're doing half the time. But I think everyone saw our passion and what we were trying to do and was willing to either give us a break here and there or work with us, give their input. And somehow, some way, we completed a season, which you will all see very soon enough. And now we're be heading into uh, to year two, um, full, full steam ahead. So you see, guys, passion makes up for skill and experience. Um, anyway, okay. <laughs> yeah, and Max, I mean, yeah, you, you said without a doubt uh, that we would make – I felt like – we, I thought we would like, you know, gracefully stumble our way there, but I really think we bulldozed in, you know, we, we made yeah. thanks to you an amazing, freaking amazing product. And it was, it was great. It was awesome. Did you it have really any, that? The first episode was more polished than I thought it was going to be based on the footage we got. Um, mm -hmm. And it's definitely not perfect. Um, there's, you know, the wind is a big problem, but I don't know. I think I did the best I could to minimize that as an issue, having the subtitles, um making sure that everything was mixed with the music well enough um and yeah if you have any suggestions if you're an audience member and you didn't like something about the first episode you can comment and i'll see it yeah. and it might hurt my feelings it might make me cry but it might also make the second episode better so yeah. feel free to be honest but yeah. be nice um and yeah when you're commenting please don't give anyone a hard time if you don't like someone in the episode you don't don't leave a comment and i i'm i'm sure everyone listening to this already knows this but please just don't be mean you know these contestants they're putting themselves out there they, they are don't students. Be public on youtube they are, yeah. they are, they are <laughs> students at rutgers university so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and then i mean the last question i had i mean it's kind of redundant i was gonna say are you guys excited for the future but i mean obviously we are you know we me and adam i'm gonna be graduating this semester i'm already graduated <laughs> So Max is a junior right now. He's going to be a senior next year. And we have a really, we still have to do elections and formalize everything, but we have a really good team set up for next year. They're already, like like Max said in the very beginning. Well, I will say the elections, 
we might, I think, Peter, you're going to be the only one running elections because you're outgoing. Yeah. So mm, there's a chance that none of us and none of the current board ends up getting reelected next year. So I, mean, I don't want to discourage anyone who decides they want to be part of Rutgers. Oh, yeah, that's that's a great board. point. Yeah, definitely. I'm not guaranteed to be on it. I'm running, anyone but I'm going to get it. Anyone can come to us and join. As of this recording, yeah. it's March 30th. We're planning on doing a game night in a few weeks at the Student Center, uh, co- uh, probably College Ave Student Center, but we'll uh, have to formalize that a little bit more. Uh, like just something for everyone to have fun for one one night. Play some board games, little mini competitions, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're, we're just trying to have it now that the season's over too, even more of a good time for even more people to find us. Uh, and that's about everything too. Like I'm going to, this is the same with plug for our social media accounts. Like definitely follow us on Instagram. That is our primary uh, source where you'll get information, but we also uh, have a Twitter, a Facebook, and we post on Reddit and obviously this YouTube channel. Uh, so we have a lot of platforms that we're trying to be as active as possible on and any suggestions, any feedback, anytime you just want to, talk about survivor to someone show up to one of our events and uh you know who knows you might meet some really great people yeah and all right guys before we end it i think i just have this is the final question this is the most important question this is the question i think i've counted i've been asked like 10 times when's episode two coming out um (laughs) not as soon as you would like but yeah 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 but i'm think because we wanted to get the first episode out as soon as possible just while the semester was still going on while people were still interested uh editing these do take a long time and i'm doing pretty much all the editing work so i think you can look at may i think mid, we're looking mid at end of may. may mid mid to yeah, may. yeah i think so um yeah, but until then we are going to be releasing this podcast yep. uh, i know peter you're going to be working on some clips there will still be content it won't be episode two um, but hopefully we get episode two good and ready, uh, by, the, by mid May. And maybe I can come up with a system where we can upload over the summer. Uh, yeah. we do want our advisor to watch these first, but we'll, that's something we're actively trying to figure out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, but if we can, there will be more consistency over the summer in a perfect world. We'll have the host season finished and released before next school year. So that way, anyone who may want to be, so. yeah, mm-hmm. uh, can, can see it, see what we're all about and then see us at the club fair next year. And uh go go ahead with it yep Mm. all right guys well i think i mean we talked about a lot this is gonna be a really good first episode of on the raritan with peter slattery so all right guys thank you very much we're gonna end it here this is redundant but i'm gonna say it again this was on the raritan with your host peter slattery thank you guys we'll see you soon